Happy endings are not associated with shipwrecks for a reason. But it might be that the sinking of the Tek Singh, tragic as it undoubtedly was, could be seen as the best outcome for a worst-case scenario due to its historical contributions when its porcelain cargo was discovered in 1999, 150 years after the sinking that claimed 1,500 lives. After all, how often does one hear about a bona fide sunken treasure ship? But what led to the Tek Singh being dubbed Titanic of the East? And how much of the disaster could have been avoided? And how were its secrets discovered over two centuries later? Generally, a shipwreck is named after a landmark or location, yet the Tek Singh's name lived on in infamy due to her reputation as one of the bigger vessels in Asia and record-keeping at the time. At over 60 meters long and 10 meters high, the three-mastered ocean-faring Chinese ship had a burthen of a thousand tons. It took 200 crew to man the mighty ship on her voyage between the port of Amoy, now Shaimen in Fujian, China, and Batavia, Dutch East Indies, now Jakarta, Indonesia. In her hold was a large cargo of porcelain as well as spice and medicine, and also 1,600 passengers, most of whom were Chinese immigrants. Their voyage through the South China Sea would take many weeks, and as a vastly important area of commerce, it means passing neighboring boats would not be uncommon. After all, the port of Amoy was central to the country's trading prowess, even during a time when the economy was being crippled by an opium epidemic. This may be why even a ship as large for its time like the Tek Singh was overloaded. There was so much cargo that some of it was strapped to the outside of the ship's hull. Perhaps there would have been reconsiderations of weight distribution if the wealthy merchants had been on board, but as their passengers were mostly peasants without cabins to sleep in, it seemed commerce took priority over life. But after a month or so at sea, it's very possible that the supply of food and fresh water had dwindled. Or perhaps it was the urgency to earn coin that was the main driving force. In any case, the captain decided to take a fateful shortcut through the Gaspar Strait. Between the Indonesian island of Belitung and Bangka is a strait split into branches. Though it had been discovered in 1724, at least 100 years before, it was still not heavily charted so sailors traveled at their own risk. On this occasion, the captain felt lucky to use the not-so-tried and tested route, and for a while they had luck on their side. Despite a monsoon blowing from the northeast, the Tek Singh was making great progress. There were only 300 kilometers left to go, virtually the last leg, when disaster struck on the night of February 6, 1822. There was a considerable swell in the sea, so it would have been difficult, especially in the dark, to differentiate between wind-blown waves and the waves crashing against the shoals. Suddenly, she ran aground on a reef. So sharp was the encounter that it was akin to an explosion. Then the rising tide, coupled with those strong winds, pulled her over to one side. She was badly holed and completely unnavigable, and so she unceremoniously sank to the sandy bottom under 100 feet of sea. It would have all happened so quickly. Had she just been 100 meters to the west, just over double her own length, then she would have sailed straight past the reef and onwards to her final destination without notice. Unfortunately, that's not how things panned out. It wouldn't be until daybreak when the few survivors could be saved. 7th February, 1822. James Pearl is captaining the East Indiaman sailing ship, Indiana. He was journeying from Indonesia to Borneo through the strait when debris was noticed in the water. Pearl followed the trail and sure enough, the cargo from the Tek Singh led them to a pocket of survivors, some 190 in total. A further 18 were saved by a Wang Kang, a small Chinese vessel thought to be journeying in tandem with the Tek Singh, though evidently it had avoided catastrophe on the rocks. The sinking would be documented in four newspapers and books at the time, a bit of a rarity. Rarer still was how historians would use these articles to uncover precise information regarding the captain, the boat's journey, and the exact date of the incident. Yet despite this initial record keeping, the story of the Tek Singh would become as hidden as its wreck. We know that the passengers ranged from 70 years old to 6, but data on the nature of survivors remains a mystery. Then 18 short years after it sank, 
the First Opium War broke out and so all those wooden Chinese seagoing ships became ancient history. That makes the Tek Sing one of the last key witnesses to the prosperity of the Maritime Silk Road. That was until some 200 years later when all of her secrets were finally brought to the surface. Michael Hatcher is an experienced treasure hunter specializing in the South China Sea. He had earned his stripes investigating sunken submarines and retrieving large cargoes from the depths of the sea. In 1999, he would make history again when he found the final resting place of the Tek Sing, or at least what was left. All the wood had rotted away over time, leaving very few metal parts to serve as breadcrumbs. Sonar was no use and there wasn't enough metal to rely on metal detectors. Every time a fleeting signal was received, the team had to do a deep dive, but every time they returned to the surface empty-handed, it just made them more pessimistic. Thankfully, Hatcher stuck to his guns to track down the location of the legendary ship after many long weeks painstakingly searching the seabed. The team returned to a signal location from a few days earlier, possibly out of desperation, as previously the signal was so weak they didn't warrant it worth investigation. But Hatcher's lucky vessel, the Restless M, was determined. 100 feet down in the murky depths of the sea, divers made a curious find. A large iron hoop. And then another. And another. These were reinforcements to the ship. They followed the rings only to find a single, solitary white and blue object, a porcelain bowl. It felt like they had come so close, yet so far, but they didn't see what was right under their nose. Stacks of porcelain were protruding from the seabed, some as high as two meters. They had found the long-lost Tek Sing. Divers worked in rotation to bring the treasure to the surface, and then a team of 50 cleaned and packed everything up in preparation for travel. And this was alongside the measuring and photographing of the site for scientific and historical purposes. Needless to say, it was an arduous task. Amongst the treasure were remains of soldiers preserved all this time on the seabed. However, many of Hatcher's crew were Chinese or Indonesian, so moving bodies was against their cultural learnings, or at least their superstitions. Therefore, the bodies of the crew were left aboard what was left of the Tek Sing, where no doubt they would be buried by silt once more. Since Hatcher returned to Singapore with his once-in-a-lifetime find, the porcelain has done the rounds in private auction houses and museums. Not only was the size of the treasure so much, over 350,000 pieces, that the auction went on for 24 hours straight. What really caught people's attention, though, was how pristine so many of the items were. Then in 2018, a lot of the scattered treasure would be regrouped in a Chinese maritime museum. Here, experts were able to learn that some of the items tightly packed onto the Tek Sing were 100 years old even at that time. In all, the range of age and dates between the items were so vast that it stands as a truly impressive collection of a long timeline in Chinese history. The most iconic items are the white and blue porcelain from the 19th century, but there are also items with careful floral designs and five-color porcelain. Hands down, the discovery of the Tek Sing is one of the most historically important finds amongst all maritime history. And yet, the cost for this knowledge was a colossal loss of life. What does it say about human nature that the lives of peasant passengers were worth less than its cargo? What does it say about us that we know more about the history of a porcelain pot than the identity of any of the victims? Questions like this don't have any answers, but that doesn't mean we can't be thankful for the historical find. After all, the sea is a cold mistress who gives life as much as it takes it. At least now the Tek Sing has been immortalized, as have the faceless passengers who traveled to the bottom of the sea with the ship's treasure. But what do you think? Did the captain care about the passengers when risk a shortcut? Or was he worried about their food and water supply? Let us know in the comments section. Be sure to share this with a history lover you know, and leave a like if you want more videos about treasure finds. As always, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to see our next video.